Now, just like all of our brain came from the secondary brain vesicles, those swellings in our neural tube from back when you were a little slime, remember that hole I kept drawing down the middle of that tube? Well, there are structures that arise from that hole, from that space in the center of the tube, including the central canal of the spinal cord. So this hole, this central, this, this hollow place in the neural tube, we're comfortable with it already as running down the middle of the spinal cord, but it also, like, did some crazy dances. Oh, what? And folded and twisted and got covered over in various ways and forms these ventricles in your brain that are filled with the cerebrospinal fluid. Not only are they filled with cerebrospinal fluid, but there's also cerebrospinal fluid outside of the brain floating between, excuse me, yeah, separating the brain from the cranium, the skull, and making it so that your brain actually floats in the skull and doesn't get you a giant headache. Are you ready to learn your ventricles? I know you are. First of all, there's two ways we have to look at this. We have to look at it like this, really, and like this. So take a deep breath because this is like an adventure in three-dimensional thinking. First of all are your lateral ventricles, lateral ventricles. And how many of them do you have? There's two. They look like sheep horns, like ram horns. And here's the scoop. They are separated in your brain by a structure called the septum pellucidum. Septum pellucidum, pellucidum separates your lateral ventricles. And they really do curve up into your cerebrum. Now, the lateral ventricles are connected to the third ventricle because you have one lateral ventricle and another lateral ventricle, and then you've got the third, third ventricle, which is actually also seen about here, yeah, and which is seen right here. Really? That, that's all your third ventricle. But connecting the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle, connecting two ventricles, is the interventricular foramen. Interventricular foramen. Foramen. All right. So connecting them, we've got the interventricular foramen, and then we're in the third ventricle. The third ventricle is kind of in this thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus zone, and it's a space. And then there's another little uh, duct, and it's this thing right here, and that one is the uh, cerebral aqueduct, A-Q-U-A-D-U-C-T, lateral ventricle connected to the third ventricle through the interventricular foramen. Third ventricle connected to the fourth ventricle from the cerebral aqueduct. So the fifth thing that we're going to look at is the fourth ventricle. Oh, my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. It's not as bad as you think, or maybe it is. <laughs> is it as bad as I think? What did I say? Fourth ventricle. And here's the fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle is between the cerebellum and the pons, and it's a space that you can stick your little probe in. And here it is here, that's the fourth, and here it is here, that's the fourth. Did you follow that? Okay, there's a little hole in the fourth, in the wall around the fourth ventricle, 
And that hole allows cerebrospinal fluid to drain out of it. And it drains out of that hole and into the surround, like it goes from the, there's a hole in here, and it drains into the area surrounding the brain itself. Now, um, let's see. Once it drains into this space here, I feel like I need to make this bigger. I'm sorry. We're going to just take this, cut it. We're going to go up, find ourselves a blank page. Usually I'm a little more organized than this. Yes. Oh, dear. But we're just going to make it bigger so you, get, so you can see this. I think it will be helpful. Okay, so look. This is our half view. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we'll bring it down just so we can see it better. And let's just label our meninges while we're here because you have the, the, the meninges are, remember the, the structures surrounding your brain and spinal, spinal cord, meninges. We have the dura mater, which is the tight to the skull, dura mater. And then we have the pia mater, remember that guy? Here's pia mater tight to the brain. And then between them was the fantastical arachnoid mater, arachnoid mater. And that was kind of a, a spider webby stuff in between. Now, here's the scoop, my friends. Your cerebrospinal fluid actually drains into the subarachnoid space. So it drains into the space between the pia mater and the arachnoid mater. And that's what you're seeing right here. Cerebrospinal fluid is this stuff right here, this light blue stuff. But what's the dark blue stuff? You know what that is? Holy bloody hell. It's blood. It's venous blood from your brain. Your brain has taken all the oxygen out of the blood and has dumped it into this sinus right here, this space. And you have little like mushroom shaped structures within that space right here. And these guys basically drain cerebrospinal fluid into the blood. So the cerebrospinal fluid, which started up here in my lateral ventricle and traveled all the way through what will go to these little mushroom shaped structures and get dumped into the venous blood supply. Old blood is then carried out of the brain through the jugular vein and to the heart and then to the lungs to get reoxygenated and sent back around to the body again. Your cerebrospinal fluid, because it's being produced in your brain constantly, is constantly, there's almost like a higher pressure of fluid in there, so it's constantly being dumped back into the blood supply, which enables you to constantly be cleaning and renewing that cerebrospinal fluid. If you look down here at the bottom of my brain, boy, you can actually see that the cerebrospinal fluid can travel down through the outside, like surrounding the spinal cord. Because remember that we had dura mater in our spinal cord as well. And so that, it, it can circulate there as well. <gasps> oh my gosh, how did you do? That is fantastic. And this lecture is done.